what Ohio State needs from its veteran players for 2024 to be a special season. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Wednesday edition of Locked On Buckeyes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day here on Wednesday, July 17th in the year 2024. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone, every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Ohio State, during the offseason, got a lot of news that maybe was exactly what they were expecting from certain players. At the same time, they also got some maybe news that could be classified as unexpected news. Travion Henderson staying at Ohio State was unexpected by a lot of people. Guys on defense, hey, will Tyler Williams go? No, he's staying in Columbus. Jack Sawyer doing his thing to talk to the older guys, the guys that he came to Columbus with and saying, hey, we got unfinished business. It is worth staying in Columbus to finish what we started. Some of that was expected. Some of it was not expected. All in all, a lot of it came from the veteran players in Columbus. Some of of the vets are also guys that came from other schools around the country that will be wearing the scarlet and gray this year. And with that in mind, the vets that Ohio State has this year – they are going to need to do a lot of things in big ways and be very important and pivotal for the Buckeyes to have a special year in the upcoming college football season. Because think about what we have this year at Ohio State. Just thinking about the vets, you have guys on this team that are vets that have managed some shaky times, have had to weather storms a little bit, have had to figure things out on the fly, Think about being a freshman or a sophomore or a guy who is starting for the first time, and all of a sudden you're going up against a team that is doing things you've never seen before. But what do you do in that moment? Figure things out quickly on the fly, but also you rely on your vets that have been there before, that have done things a little bit, and now you're that guy. Ohio State's going to be asked to manage some things this year that they've never had to manage before. A Big Ten um, conference that has 18 teams, that's a new water. Now, granted, Ohio State is still in the Big Ten. Well, Big Ten teams, excuse me. They still have only nine regular season games. So that's still one thing that is similar. However, Ohio State's going to Oregon. You never had to play Oregon on the road with a Penn State, with a Michigan, with Nebraska in the conference. You have not had to do that, or with Iowa as well on your schedule. You haven't had to do that, so that's a little bit different. Not as shaky as it might be for other schools, but it's it's still different. For the first time ever in the history of the Big Ten Conference Championship game, it'll be one versus two in the conference. No more East versus West, or excuse me, um, um, yeah, East versus West, or leaders and legends and whoever thought about that. <laughs> Why? Didn't make no sense. Well, for the first time, Ohio State might have to have a rematch with the team they played in the regular season, that's not a team that's on the other side of the conference. It could be, now geographically, Oregon is on the other side of the country, other side of the conference. But however, it could be an Oregon, a team who's probably going to be a playoff team. It could be a Michigan rematch in back-to-back weeks. That is uncharted territory. Now, Ohio State at the same time, like many other schools that will make it to the playoff, I'm assuming Ohio State will make the playoff this year. What do you have? an expanded playoff, a 12-team playoff. Ohio State can either have a bye or host a game in the playoff in the shoe. There's so many different things that Ohio State's going to have to weather this year and navigate this year and figure out how to manage. And that is why a few of the numerous reasons navigating these these different times in college football, you need vets. You need guys that have been there for a while, that have been there, that have done that, that have won conference championships, that have made the playoffs, that have done big things in college football and are saying, hey, look, I know what I've done previously, but I want to do that again and then some with the guys in the locker room with me that are a part of the brotherhood in Columbus. When I think about the vets at Ohio State, I think it's rare for any college football team in any year, to have the number of vets, veteran players, the Buckeyes currently have. Quarterback Will Howard. 
And remember I said there's guys that have done big things at other schools around the country that weren't at Columbus doing it at Ohio State? Well, Howard's one of them. He's already won a Big 12 Conference Championship. He beat TCU a couple years ago in the Big 12 Conference Championship game, and TCU was a national runner-up. Now, that may sting some people because – I, I believe Ohio State was better than TCU that year. I'm not trying to sugarcoat that or say it's not true, but that is true. So Will Howard's already done some things. Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Jenkins. Henderson broke a record his freshman year that was held by Maurice Claret. And Maurice Claret was a freshman, I believe, in 2002. Think about how long that record was held by a really good running back. Then Quinshawn Jenkins, former SEC freshman of the year, two years as a starting back down there at Ole Miss, is now at Ohio State. These vets, man, they're not just veteran players that have played a whole lot of ball. They're really, really good. You got to make it Egbuka. The offensive line is full of vets and uh, Simmons and Donovan Jackson and Carson Hensman and Seth McLaughlin and Josh Fryer. I don't know if Hensman's going to start or not. I think he should. But even if he doesn't, he can still help guys and manage some of these difficult times at Ohio State will face this year. Defense, I mean, literally up and down. Defensive ends. Jack Sawyer and J.T. Tumaloa could have gone to the NFL, said, nope, we're staying in Columbus. D tackles, Tyleek Williams and Ty Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton was staying no matter what. Tyleek Williams could have gone to the NFL. He is still in Columbus. Man, linebacker, Cody Simon, who at times was Ohio State's best linebacker last year, is still here. That's huge. Then Sonny Styles, last year started. This year, what are you going to find from him this year? Playing a different, a different position, but he's still going to need to utilize that experience to navigate the occasional tough times that Ohio State's going to face this year. And then he got Seth, uh, excuse me, Caleb Downs and Lathan Ransom. You also got some freshmen that aren't really classified as vets yet. However, excuse me, you got sophomores and um, retro freshmen that have played a, a, a few games, but they're going to be looking to guys like Will Howard, like Travion Henderson like Caleb Downs, like Lathan Ransom. Why? They're the leaders. And Ohio State having an abundance of vets this year, it's almost unheard of. Think about any year you've co- you've watched Ohio State football, or maybe you're someone that covers Ohio State, tapped into the show today. Thank you if you're a, a part of that group. And you're trying to figure out, well, over the course of, let's say, Ryan Day's tenure, you generally don't have this amount of uh, the number of vets that Ohio State has Throughout any year, I think 2019 is one of those years where Ohio State had a lot of vets. However, let's go to quarterback. Fields wasn't a vet, had started, had not been a consistent starter. I believe the quarterback was Jake Fromm down there in Athens, and Justin Fields could not jump the depth chart, which I think he should have. I mean, Kirby Smart made a silly decision. Uh, I want to say that I want to say that was the um, Jake Fromm period when he just could not overcome that. Hey, man, like, stuff happens. It's silly, but stuff happens. But what we realize is that the vets Ohio State has right now and uh, Ryan Day's tenure, Ryan Day also understands this is a special year. This is a special team, a special group of uh, talented athletes that have decided to stay in Columbus. They are needed in a big way, and maybe a bigger way than anybody might realize right now, for Ohio State to do everything the team is setting out to do in 2024. And they're going to do it behind the backs or on the shoulders of the vets. If the veteran players at Ohio State show up and show out like they're supposed to, watch out everybody on Ohio State's schedule. Y'all would not like the outcome of the games when y'all face the Buckeyes. Not only is it a, a great that Ohio State has an abundance of veteran players this year, but it also provides another aspect that's beneficial for the Buckeyes in the upcoming year and it ties into the coaches on the coaching staff we'll dive into that next this episode is brought to you by FanDuel I love sports I love them so much I never want them to stop but as the playoffs wind down we get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to but FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most 
out of your summer fan duel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Half should turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen every day. The everydayers have heard a lot of talk this year, this offseason, about Ohio State's coaching staff and Matt Guerrero and Tim Walton and Carlos Lockton. I'm really high on that hire. And Chip Kelly and even Bill O'Brien a few months ago prior to – man, it's so weird how much stuff's happened in this offseason with the coaching staff. But a lot of it has not been to, to the degree of Ohio State's and comparing Ohio State's veteran players – and making that connection with the continuity they're going to have this year with the coaching staff. Now, you may say, Jay, you just mentioned Chip Kelly. You also just mentioned Bill O'Brien. So on offense, there might not be the continuity that you would think they would have, but then I'll tell you a little bit of reasons why I think that's actually going to be a benefit that Chip Kelly is in Columbus, even though he's a newcomer on the coaching staff. Ohio State's coaching staff this year is one that I love. I like it from top to bottom. Don't think it's perfect, but that's okay. The, the ship keeps moving. We keep on moving forward and figuring out, hey, if you're a little down right now, how do you how do we bring you up and raise the floor of the coaching staff so everybody continues to get better? On defense, let's start there. You guys are very smart people. You're Ohio State fans, one of the smartest fan base. No, let me go a little bit further. The smartest fan base in the country. What do you – a lot of you realize – when you think about coordinators in college football, what do you think? Oh, they're going to be they're going to be shopped. A guy might come to you in 2022 when he might be gone at the end of the 2023 season. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You say, Jay, wait, wait. you didn't say 2024. You said he's going to come to you in 2022, which is eventually coaching that year. Coach for you in 2023. End of the year, he's gone. Why? That's just the nature of the business. I don't like it. The players don't like it. Imagine being um, in the family. You're you're the wife or you're, you're kids of a coach who is constantly, oh, well, I'm in Columbus now. Oh, wait, somebody else is calling me. I'm going to the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, okay, I'm here for four years, not two. That didn't work out. I'm going back to college. Let's go to Clemson. Okay, cool. Oh, I can't get a coordinator job. Let's go to be an analyst. Oh, that's a one-year gig. Going from Clemson, South Carolina, going to Florida State. Oh, okay, here for a couple of years. Let's go on somewhere else. That is the nature of the beast. It's not fun. And think about if you are a college football player. Specifically, let's look at Denzel Burke. Because Denzel Burke, his freshman year, did not have Jim Knowles. I want to say that was a Matt Barnes year. Matt Barnes. He left Ohio State at the end of the year and went on to Memphis. I forget his name. Forgive me for forgetting the coach. I was thinking about the Knuckleheads podcast because that's going to uh, – or excuse me, all the smoke that's coming up later in this show, um, which is why Matt Barnes was actually on my mind. However, let's get back to the task. Denzel Burke was one of those guys that his freshman year didn't have Jim Knowles. The defense wasn't that good either. So it wasn't like he had Jim Knowles and they were trash. No, the defense was not that good in, in, in Denzel Burke's freshman year. He played phenomenal ball. True freshman going on the field week one on the road at Minnesota. I believe the game was on Big Fox. Um, I believe that was a, a Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, Jenny Taft on the call of that game. And I, be, I remember that game being at Minnesota. And I'm thinking, okay, who is this kid? What is he doing? Oh, he played good ball. Ohio State really needed um, some things to happen that were, well, um, not what you exactly think were going to happen for Ohio State to win that game. But Denzel Burke's a guy that year played great ball. And then what happened? He had a new DC the next year. But Jim Knowles didn't leave at the year two. Jim Knowles didn't leave at the year three. He had opportunities to go elsewhere. And I do believe he was in the running to be the head football coach at Duke, which was a university he previously coached at, which is why it was enticing. Now, think about for Denzel Burke, if he had in his four-year Buckeye career, if he had 
three offensive coordinators in four years. You had one guy your freshman year. You had another guy your senior year. Then you had one guy your sophomore and junior seasons. What would that do for him? I mean, it might it be different to get different coaching with different guys and learn different techniques, but also that might stunt your growth as a player because you got all this stuff coming in one year out there, one year, one, one time he's here, it goes in one year, it sticks. Okay, cool. The next coach comes in, says something a little bit different. You got to push that first coach's news out of your ear and put it some more coaches news in that sticks for a couple of years. New coach comes in. It just gets a little difficult. In the NFL, the NFL pro NFL players say it all the time. NBA players say it all the time. The coaches moving back and forth, especially if you're a young quarterback and you have a different offensive coordinator um, the first three years you're in the league, and you want, it's tough, and it's a big reason why players aren't developed the way that they should be because guys just keep moving all over the place. And when I think about Ohio State's vets, you have Jim Knowles who has coached literally all the guys I mentioned previously for multiple years, including Sonny Styles, coached them for multiple years. Now, when it comes to Chip Kelly, a little bit different situation. Has not been at Ohio State previously as a Buckeyes coach. He has not been someone that has spent a whole lot of time on the install, because as Ryan Day said on Big New in Conversations with Joe Klatt, at with the time that Chip Kelly came in, he was able to teach some of the, some of the technique and some of the initial things, but he could not do the install until after spring practice, just due to the nature of him getting to Columbus due to the timing of Bill O'Brien, really his hire, and then also Bill O'Brien um, uh, saying, hey, I'm leaving Ohio State, only been there for less than a month, to go to Boston College to take that head coaching job. I'm happy for him. My power to him. I'm not mad at Bill, uh, Bill O'Brien for that. Really, I'm happy for him. But with the timing of Chip Kelly coming in, it really stunned a few things. But Chip Kelly knows Ryan Day. And also, the Buckeyes are still using Ryan Day's offense. So it's not like Chip Kelly's coming in and teaching this stuff, his own stuff, his own bag of tricks. No. Chip Kelly is learning Ryan Day's offense, but I think Ryan Day's offense takes parts from Chip Kelly's offense, so they're not completely as far apart as you would like. Even before... Ryan Day brought in Chip Kelly to be the offensive coordinator. Ryan Day realized that Ohio State needs to run the ball more. And I knew in my mind, I thought, hey, if Bill O'Brien comes in to be the offensive coordinator at Ohio State and the QB coach, what are you going to do? Not only would you get better quarterback play from Will Howard this year than he's had previously in his lifetime playing college football, because that's what Bill O'Brien gets from his quarterbacks. He provides and coach him, coaches them into having a career year, but also Bill O'Brien's going to run the ball more. Chip Kelly's going to run the ball more. And Ryan Day knew beforehand you got to run the ball more, so you go out and hire a, court, a coordinator in Bill O'Brien who, one, can coach quarterbacks very well, but also, two, is going to run the ball more, which is what you need to do, and you realize that. Same with Chip Kelly. Chip, Chip Kelly's going to come in, run Ryan Day's offense, but everybody knows Chip Kelly going to run that thing. And if that's what he continues to do, watch out everybody out there. Because not only are you going to have continuity with the coaching staff, with the coordinator and the head coach, but also these guys that are here in Henderson and Ibuka and Simmons and Howard, they can help Chip Kelly figure out, well, hey, I know this is what you want. This is not it's not what he's good at. We've seen this before. Here's what we have done. It's worked out to perfection every other time. Chip Kelly realizes that and saying, oh, oh, I like that. Let's roll with it. So the continuity between the coaches and players this year, especially on defense, it's huge. And I cannot wait to see exactly how it, it goes and it works itself out to perfection in the upcoming season. Now, when it comes to veteran players at Ohio State, they're going to do a lot of things off the field, the impact success on the field this year regarding some younger Buckeyes. We'll talk about that next. Thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every day. Ohio State's veteran players, it's the talk of the day. Um, and there are a group of people that, honestly, looking at what's on my notebook right now, I just wrote down a few of the players that are at Ohio State currently playing at the top of the depth chart. 
you're easily going to have – I mean, it wouldn't shock me if the Buckeyes have a, the quarterback, Will Howard, assuming he's the starting quarterback, if he is drafted, if the Buckeyes have two running backs drafted, uh, receiver drafted, and Egbuka. It wouldn't shock me if there was a tight end drafted, less less likely as of right now, but it wouldn't shock me if it happened. Um, you could easily see, depending – if, if these five guys are the starting offensive line and Simmons, Jackson, Hensman, McLaughlin, and Fryer, I could see all five getting drafted. I don't think all five will make an NFL – NFL roster, 53-man 53, 53 roster, but all of them could be could be drafted. And then you got the guys on defense, and, I mean, realistically, all of them could be drafted too. And I say I'll have to say this because when I think about veteran players, I often go back to a conversation I hear on podcasts I listen to pretty frequently. I mentioned earlier in the show uh, all the smoke with Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. I also listen to Knuckleheads with Quentin Richardson and um, uh, Darius Miles. And in those podcasts, especially um, uh, Knuckleheads, I first came, saw that one maybe back during the COVID, and I was like, oh, I love hearing these guys talk to players that I watched when I was a kid, brought a little bit of a level of nostalgia to my life. And what did they do? Talked about the vets that were on the teams they were drafted by or first played with their rookie years and said, hey, man, this guy impacted me. This guy did this. This guy did that. I remember Charles Barkley. Now, I'm not old enough to watch Charles Barkley when I was a kid. But I remember Charles Barkley when he was talking about getting drafted by the Philadelphia 76ers and all the things that went into that early portion of his career. He talked about Moses Malone. He talked about Dr. J, Julius Irving, and the things that they did to help him. Not only, hey, you can't wear that. What do you mean I can't wear that? You're a pro now. And they went out there and helped him buy his first suit. And realize, hey, here's how you got to act, how you got to dress. Here's all the details about being a pro. And also they helped him, I believe it was Moses Malone, helped Charles Barkley get his body right to where he dropped from, I think, three bills to about 260, maybe 250. Realized, hey, you're too light. And they got his weight back up. The vets, man, they're fun. It's fun to have vets on a team for as a coach. Because then I think about Jeremiah Smith specifically. Tied him to a Mecca Egbuka, or when I look at well, Travion Henderson or Quinshawn Jenkins with James Peoples and Sam Williams Dixon, or if I look at um Jack Sawyer and JT Jump a little while with Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson Jr., even though Jackson Jr. and Curry have been at Ohio State for a couple years, what can they still do? Learn from the vets on the team. And I do think this year, Ohio State is in a weird spot. It's a fun spot. It's an enjoyable spot. And if I am Ryan Day, they can coach for me. Imagine this here. Will Howard's out on the field. Julian Sand is, what, third or four in line to get the next rep. Will Howard does his thing. Devin Brown does his thing. And let's just say, for sake of argument's sake right now, Julian Sand is the third guy in the line. Julian Sand goes out there, whatever the play, whatever the route is, he's throwing, he's whatever um, throw they're making it, having him throw at the moment. Cool. He drops back, rolls out to his right. All of a sudden, what do you find? Oh, that's not the right footwork there. It may have been a complete pass, but the footwork may be a little bit off. It seems like, look, it's complete. It's cool. And Will Howard's like, no, no, not just complete. Make sure your footwork is, is what? It needs to be in the way it needs to be every single time. So you have that ability there. And ultimately, this is this is something I think every college football coach wants. I, I think secretly, maybe behind closed doors, and they may talk to say it a little bit. College coaches want what Ohio State currently has, not only the abundance of talent, but also be, being able to have literally an extension of the coach in the position room, and that extension is a guy that's going to get drafted, but also not going to get drafted because of just a, him being a one-hit wonder. Him, He's going to get drafted because of what he's done previously and of things he's going to do in the upcoming season. That's huge. It's unheard of. C.J. Hicks, for example, and I've, I'm trying to do my best, which is realistic, not too difficult, to be able to really truly realize that as much as we've heard conversations about CJ Hicks on the football field, reality is that he ain't played no ball at linebacker. 
I know it's not a popular thing to say, but it's reality. And people, he were like, well, even though he ain't played no ball, he's still going to be good. Based off what? Are you Jim Knowles or James Laurinaitis or Ryan Day? Do you have the inside scoop? Are you one of the Oklahoma uh, student beat writers that were watching practice there in Oklahoma to get a scoop on players? I think it was a player injury or something. Do you have that access? Are you someone that can sneak in a camera and put it up there in the rafters and have the Woody Hayes Athletic Center and control the thing remotely to be able to see exactly what is going on? Do you have that access to know what CJ Hicks is doing all the time on the field? Because if you do, hey, tap in. <laughs> tap, hey, share that with me because I would love to have that access. You don't. Now, student beat writers at Oklahoma, hey, kudos to you. Ohio State's one of those schools that has closed practices, and I don't even think they would let the student writers do that, which is cool. Like, hey, you can't sneak in and out. No, the students have sources. The beat writers have sources. They Everybody has sources, but it's a little bit different when you're able to see things with your own two eyes, which is why when it comes to C.J. Hicks, I have a hard time providing realistic expectations for him because we don't have game data, which isn't a problem. But when he is out there on the field, because I do believe just based off things we hear, he's going to play this year at times. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing how Ryan Day and James Lernatus and Jim Knowles really try to navigate the rotation there. Because they hear all offseason, Ohio State has three linebackers and Styles and Simon and Hicks. Ohio State runs a 4-2-5. When you're on a 4-2-5, you only got two backers on the field at one time. And... I don't see them taking Styles off the field. I don't see them taking Simon off the field. So that's Hicks on the way out, who is the last man standing. But what do we know? Do they try to move him and make him utilize the jack position? Maybe. I don't know. But if he's a jack position, who on the D-line is coming out? I don't know. May say Ty, Ty Hamilton, which that, I mean, that would probably be the easy move. Take Ty Hamilton out. Have Ty Lake Williams there. Um, he could play a little nose if he needs to. Ty Hamilton could too. Like either one of them will be fine at the nose. But what do you do? I'm still on a wait and see mode with what Hicks will be as a player. I'm in a wait and see mode with what we'll see from the linebacker rotation. I'm not in a wait and see mode knowing what's going to happen with the vets, what they should do. These young players, soak it all in. Take it all in. Because I remember my final year, no, excuse me, my sophomore year playing high school football. And at the end of our second championship loss to Warren Central, Darren Evans played at Virginia Tech after that. And I, few years after that, and then Jeremy Finch played at Florida a few years after that. I mean, the team was just loaded, just just insane amount of talent. Uh, coach ended up leaving there, going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, ended up going to IMG to coach. I mean, he was just – it was just an insane amount of talent on that team. But I remember after that loss, went inside the small gym there at Lawrence Central High School, and Coach Barthel brought everybody in there. Coach Fiesel was the O-line, D-line coach. Had everybody line up, and one by one, we walked by and shook the hand of every senior. I didn't realize in the moment how special that moment was, how special that team was, and that that was a crazy amount of talent on one team. Soaked everything in I could at the time. If I could go back, I would soak up more. If I'm Jeremiah Smith, even Carno Tate, who ain't played that much yet, only one year in Columbus, soak up everything you can from the vets on the Buckeyes team. Because it'll help you not only this year, but in the future as a football player as well. Thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen every day. Now, for your second listen, check out the Locked On Big Ten podcast. Craig Sheeman took over the show a few months ago, and he's kind of revamped the Locked On Big Ten podcast. And as we are in the midst of SEC Media Days in Dallas, Texas, we're right around the corner. We'll be or a few days away from the start of Big Ten Media Days in Indianapolis, Indiana, at Lucas Oil Stadium. If you want to get the landscape of the conference and kind of get a preview of the Big Ten Media Days, head over to Locked on Big Ten, make it your second listen of the day, and Craig Sheeman will entertain you, providing the news you need to know what's going on inside the Big Ten Football Conference. Right here on a Wednesday, Buckeye fans. Follow me on X at jstevens07. We'll see you next time.